guys, welcome back. I'm a Dr. Jones, OBGYN, and mom to four. Today we're doing everybody's favorite thing, which is watching TV together and running it with educational commentary. Is that joke old yet? I feel like that joke's old. That joke's definitely old. I need to think of some more openers. Hi. Yeah, that was a good one. Great. We're getting super close to 300,000 subscribers. I can't comprehend it, you guys. I never imagined this is where this channel would be 14 months after I started it. Insane. This video is sponsored by my hair. Just kidding. This video is sponsored by Function of Beauty and I'll talk more about them later. Let's jump into OBGYN reviews, season five, episode 11 of House. You guys tell me there's some OB or GYN aspect of this episode. So that's why we're going through it. Why'd you do that? Sixteen-year-old female gets pranked, also gets visual hallucinations and vomiting. Turns out to be a failing liver. Wilson's disease. Ceruloplasmin's normal. We have a 16-year-old female who passed out and has dysfunction of her liver. I know because you guys recommended this episode, there is something obstetric or gynecology related in this. So maybe this is like an ectopic pregnancy that she had secretly treated. You can get liver problems from methotrexate, which is a treatment for ectopic pregnancy. Maybe she has hemorrhaging from an ectopic pregnancy and lost so much blood that she's getting end organ dysfunction. She could die unless you tell us what you gave her. Just tell him. Shut up. We gave her some shrooms. We took some ourselves. We just wanted to make her loosen up a little. Well, thoughtful of you. I'm gonna guess, because this is how, that it's not the shrooms causing her liver failure, but I'm lost right now. Maybe it wasn't those kids who poisoned Natalie. Maybe it was Natalie herself. I didn't try to kill myself. And why'd you have all those painkillers? In case I get a headache. Well, maybe you took a few too many. Do you have any kids? No. Acetylcysteine could save her liver, but we'd have to act fast. If there's any chance that she took all those pills. There's no chance. I guess they're working Differential diagnosis right now is that she potentially tried to kill herself by taking a bunch of Tylenol. So they're talking about acetylcysteine, which would combat Tylenol toxicity, which could cause liver failure. They're doing a lot of like asking other people, is this what happened and all of these things. You can test for toxic levels of Tylenol breakdown products in the blood. She's got liver failure and she's been complaining of headaches, which as an obstetrician, my head goes straight to preeclampsia, but they don't make any mention of her being pregnant. So I don't know where this is going, guys. You're pretty. You're pretty too. I'm fat. I'm a loser. They'll hate me. You know what they did last year? They took these photos of me for the yearbook, but it wasn't. It was for this website, making fun of me, calling me a pig. Forget about them. Let's just make you better. What's the point? Ah, oh, that just breaks my heart that she's feeling like that. High school girls can be so toxic, and I had a hard time, honestly, in high school with people being really mean to me about just in hindsight, very stupid things. But at the time it just felt overwhelmingly important. I can't imagine going through that experience where people made fun of me for various things and having the age of the internet where that can be broadcast in such a mean way. Like, oh God, I hate that that happens. That's horrible. It's never okay to make fun of somebody because of their body. I don't care if you're 10 or 12 or 17 or 53, that's not okay ever. Hey, thank you for the gift. I really appreciate it. I spoke to Janice, the trial patient um, with the advanced symptoms. As a side note, her hair looks amazing. That's a great segue. In some of my last few videos, you guys have been telling me that my hair looks nice. Thank you. And thank you to Function of Beauty for making that possible and sponsoring this video. I have been using their products over the past few weeks. I love them. Their service is actually really neat. You go through, fill out a two minute survey about your hair type, 
preferences, hair care goals, and then they send you a fully customized shampoo and conditioner in a bottle with your name on it. Mine says function of MDJ and it's super cute with a pump so that it's easy to use. Although I chose the eucalyptus and mint fragrance, which smells lovely by the way, I really appreciate that they offer a fragrance free option. I feel like that's something that's really difficult to find in hair care products. All of their products, including the hair mask that I've been using for extra hydration and volume are paraben and sulfate free, which my hairdresser tells me when I see her twice a year because I'm bad at self-care is super important for taking care of your hair. They're also animal friendly, which I love. So if you want to support the channel and improve your hair care, you can check out the link in the description for 20% off Function of Beauty fully customized shampoo and conditioner. And now let's get back to a little bit of house. <laughs> Heartbeat? 150. BP 180 over 110. Crackling three quarters of the way up. <laughs> At least this means she didn't try to kill herself. Okay, something is weird. That is pulmonary edema. I have insight into this because you guys have already told me that there's something in this related to my field, but she's got liver failure, a headache, a seizure, now pulmonary edema, which is fluid in the lungs that's causing her to have difficulty breathing and cough up this frothy pink sputum and her blood pressure is very high. This is preeclampsia, eclampsia help syndrome. So preeclampsia is protein in the urine and elevated blood pressures after the 20th week of pregnancy and up to six weeks after delivery. Eclampsia is those things intertwined with a seizure and help syndrome tends to be kind of on that spectrum where you get hemolysis, meaning your blood cells start to break apart. You get elevated liver enzymes, which she has, and you get low platelets, and all can happen after the 20th week of pregnancy and up to six weeks postpartum. Again, though, they haven't talked about her being pregnant, so I'm not sure, maybe they just haven't figured that out yet. I don't know. Leaves, liver failure, and now pulmonary edema. The gynecologist in me would really love to know her last menstrual period. You don't have clinic duty today. Who says it's a duty? Hi, I'm Greg. Hi, I'm Whitney. Kari is signed. I'll be gone by your third trimester. Uh, I'm not in school. Neither is your fetus. I'm a virgin, so is my fiance. I believe him. Aren't there other ways I could get pregnant? like? Sitting on a toilet seat? Absolutely. There would need to be a guy sitting between you and the toilet seat, but yes, absolutely. Natalie? Oh, God, Natalie. She's having a seizure. Hey, on a side nerve? Is this from the TV? Not with a supple neck. I don't know what this is. Four milligrams for Azepam. Okay, she definitely has eclampsia. Now she is seizing and has pulmonary edema and liver failure. Nobody has talked about her last period. Maybe she's like 23 weeks pregnant and she just has preeclampsia and eclampsia early. I don't know, but that's what this is. They're giving her lorazepam, which is a medication to stop seizures or decrease seizure activity. If they knew that this was eclampsia, they would be giving her magnesium. That's a typical first medication for seizures if you're not pregnant. Lorazepam can be used for seizures in pregnancy as well, but typically we treat with magnesium first because we know that that works better for the type of seizures that people who are pregnant and have eclampsia have. Liver, lungs, and now brain, which has mysteriously reappeared. Speaking of mysteriously reappeared. Her ALT is 20 times normal. Transaminases and PTs way up. She's gonna lose her liver. That's the elevated liver enzymes, the EL in HELP syndrome. Do a pregnancy test. This is my fiance, Jeff. She says you told her you can get pregnant from sitting on a toilet seat. I said those words, but with particular inflection. Is there any other way? Isn't it possible? I want a paternity test. In real life, paternity testing is not done until after delivery, and that's generally done as a genetic test on the baby. You can look at the baby's chromosomes early in pregnancy with a CVS, chorionic villus sampling, which is usually done early on, like eight to 13 weeks, or with an amniocentesis, which is done later on, 15 plus weeks, 
However, this is not usually something we recommend for paternity testing. That's usually reserved for after delivery. Am I a father or not? No, but she also didn't cheat on you. Parthenogenesis, a baby without a daddy. In humans, it's only ever been theorized and it was never proved until now. Mommy, baby, your daughter has only maternal DNA, a virgin birth. I'm admittedly not very well versed at all in whatever he's talking about, parthenogenesis, but that's not a phenomenon we see in humans. There is zero way someone could get pregnant with no sperm contributing, and that could go on to be a healthy pregnancy. No way. I don't drink. We can't get you on the transplant list until we know why your liver is failing. Alcohol abuse would explain that. I haven't drunk in six months. I didn't even drink that much back then. Is anyone ever going to do a pregnancy test or ask her when her last period was? Out Foss. 300. It can't be leukemia. High alk foss could also be from liver failure. She's a teenager. It means bone growth and destruction could throw it off. Maybe, but it's higher than you'd expect. Start her on chemo. They sure jump to treatments without knowing what's going on really quickly. In no circumstances would you just start someone on chemo without having a definitive cancer diagnosis. Aquafos can be very high from many things, but it is normally high in pregnancy. I'm still wondering when they're going to do a pregnancy test or ask her when her last period was. If it's leukemia, even if we kill every cancer cell, her heart and liver are too far gone. A double transplant. With brain involvement, the committee won't even open the file. There's no reason to put a dying girl through a painful treatment if it can't save her. Don't know that that's what He's it is. Kind. I'll arrange a biopsy. This all seems a little bit unbelievable, right? Just again, operating under the presumption that this is something to do with pregnancy. However, I have seen a pregnancy go undiagnosed to this length of workup in the past. Ask her when her last period was and do a pregnancy test. There's no reason in a reproductive age person who owns the right parts to get pregnant that a pregnancy should go undiagnosed so long that a bone marrow biopsy and chemotherapy is considered prior to doing that. I saved her marriage by showing that her pregnancy was a result of parthenogenesis. Human parthenogenesis. You proved it. Yep. It's unbelievable. The cycle is broken. You would have to send it out. It would have taken... Oh, yeah. I guess the better explanation is that the paternity test showed she cheated, so I faked the whole parthenogenesis thing. What? Why? I win. Okay, that would never happen in real life. And it obviously would have been more fitting if the baby had been born on Christmas, not just attended then. It's not leukemia. Seizures. Liver failure. It's eclampsia. It's finally clicking! They're gonna do a pregnancy test, or an ultrasound, or ask her when her last period was. You have a disease called eclampsia. It causes liver failure, pulmonary edema, and seizures. It's also associated with cardiomyopathy. That's a pregnancy disease. You tested her when she came in. Uh, you can get eclampsia up to a month after giving birth. If it was three weeks ago, they could have missed it on a physical exam. I still am a little confused because a pregnancy test just a couple of weeks after delivery would most likely still have pregnancy hormones on it. But I guess if it had somehow already gone down to being zero, that potentially they could have missed the pregnancy because of that. The baby's why you quit drinking, isn't it? What happened to the baby? And she wasn't breathing. I tried so hard, but I couldn't do anything. I'm so sorry. If I had her in a hospital, maybe she'd be alive. That's a lot to take in. Can you cure this? The damage to the heart and liver are permanent. I'm gonna die. I'm sorry. I didn't even 
barrier. Just put my coat over her. Wanted to kind of touch on, they said the liver and heart dysfunction is permanent. That's not usually true with any type of preeclampsia or eclampsia. It usually is not permanent, usually resolves. I have seen one or two cases of very severe damage to the liver that was related to pregnancy induced problems that were overlapping with preeclampsia, but there were other pre-existing conditions associated with that. It would be very unusual to have permanent damage to the liver from eclampsia or preeclampsia or HELP syndrome. Cardiomyopathy, if it's peripartum cardiomyopathy, that's a very rare condition where you get an enlarged heart related to pregnancy, and that can definitely be permanent and life-threatening. However, it's not generally seen overlapping with eclampsia like this, and she doesn't really have any of the other symptoms that we typically see when we diagnose someone with peripartum cardiomyopathy. There's no treatment for eclampsia. You just manage the symptoms with magnesium until you get further enough from the pregnancy that it goes away, but it usually goes away. So it's symptomatic care until it improves, and only in very, very, very rare cases would you see someone with permanent damage related to that. With regards to postpartum preeclampsia and eclampsia, it can develop after delivery. That's always something we need to be on the lookout for if someone has recently had a baby and hopefully they're forthcoming with that information so that you don't miss it like this, even up to a few weeks after, six weeks after in rare occasions, and they have very high blood pressures and or headaches, they could have postpartum preeclampsia and that's something that we need to look for. You know, what I'm struggling with in this episode to make it realistic is that she should be continually getting better in postpartum Eclampsia, usually you're really sick for those few days where you're having those seizures and things like that, and it gradually gets better. The magnesium decreases how often people have seizures, but there's no other medicine or treatment that would be given for postpartum preeclampsia. They missed it, they weren't treating it, but at the same time, I'm not understanding how knowing that that's what it was would have really changed the outcome or how she has permanent liver failure related to it. Um, but regardless, an interesting topic. That's not your baby. You're tiny. There's no way you gave birth three weeks ago. She's my sister's. You found her. You saved her life. Now you have to let her go. So obviously in real life, as physicians, we would never be the ones going and looking for the body of the baby. Law enforcement would definitely be involved in that. It's your daughter. She was alive. People found her and took care of her. We also wouldn't just take the baby and then announce, I found your baby. Like, she can't just take someone's baby. What if that actually was that homeless couple's child? You have to do all kinds of testing, medical care, not real life. Obviously, we know that this is a drama and they have to do things like that to be dramatic. I hope that the teenager has a miraculous recovery and turns it around. Most likely in real life, that's what would happen. We learned a new word, parthenogenesis, which again, doesn't happen in humans. And we learned all about preeclampsia, eclampsia, HELP syndrome, and postpartum presentation of those syndromes. Thanks for being here today, guys. I really appreciate you giving me just a little bit of your time. I hope you learned something. If you have time, check out our sponsor. Give this video a like, subscribe if you want to. Be kind to yourself, to each other, to me, in the comments, be kind, and I will see you next time.